Greetings everyone and welcome to today's latest mix up build videos that I created for your enjoyment. Today's build I have is one that is stepping out of the realm of Monster Hunter for a bit and going into the world full of nightmarish monsters, tragically insane hunters and a nightmare filled world that makes you question whether this is a dream or not. And today I'm going to be giving my own take of the well known frontier hunters from Bloodborne. Well, actually it's three builds instead of one, so you have that coming as well. But anyways, the build will focus around what the Bloodborne Hunters are well known for, doing in terms of tactics and playstyle. And you will use everything they have to slay the beast they face, through sacrifice or failures. And of course, fashion is the main goatee for the whole video. I never truly thought creating a Bloodborne build would be possible in Monster Hunter, because of how limited some of the armors are in terms of resembling fabric based armor using the Bloodborne. Like, this was an idea I had very, very early on and already crafted in my head, but the lack of fabric based armor or armor that resembles the world of Bloodborne meant I couldn't execute it properly and had to put it on hold for the time being. But luckily, the Dante's armor made it very plausible to create a set that is strikingly close to a full fiend cosplay. Although, using the guild cost set also could generally work as well if you don't have the Dante set. Now the weapon of course in Monster Hunter all have similar components when compared to Bloodborne's trick weapons, with some looking exactly like the alternatives, but play completely different. For example, the Bloodborne Sword Cleaver and the Switch Axe look different design wise but once transformed, they both share a similar playstyle when it comes down to damaging monsters, plus they both do more damage when they're in their transformed state. So for weapon use, it's advised to go with weapons that follow the same attack or design method that hunters from Bloodborne would use. Or generally go with whatever you want, as fashion will be the strong point of this whole armor set. Now, before I briefly go into talking about the build, skills, and playstyle, I must say that this is more designed for fun and trying out something different for once. If you're someone that is looking for a change of pace within the game, the builds will have a mixture of skills that can be freely changed if you don't agree with what I went with. And the fashion sense for Bloodborne theme is probably the highest priority out of everything else within the video, so please don't get mad over the current skills I'm using. So the first build we have to show is called the New Blood set. This set is a mix of function and fashion and will aid you well within your hunts and can freely customise your heart's content for any weapon you use. As you can see, I tried my best to copy the design of the Bloodborne Hunters as best as possible. And personally, I believe I aced that, though some of the colouring for the Dante jacket couldn't be changed to all black because for some reason, all black is actually dark blood red. I don't know what's happening with the Monster Hunter dev team here, but this is something that I hope they can look into and adjust colour in the future. The weapon of choice for me was the Lightning Chopper 3 Switch Axe for its flexible augment slots, which allowed me to add in affinity and health freely while leaving me one org slot open, and this power file, which when activated allows me to do more damage onto a monster. But of course, you don't have to go with the same weapon I use, nor do you have to go with the same weapon class as I did, as at the end of the day, it's all about the fashion, and the same goes for the other builds as well. Also, I won't be covering the damage the build does as a whole, as each set are designed around using whatever weapon you want with them. So with the next two builds, I'll show you the damage my set does with the selected choice of weapon I chose. But at that point there, it's entirely up to you with whatever weapon you want to go with. Anyways, here are the following skills I went with for the current set. I went with health boost 3, recovery up 2, and recovery speed 1 to allow hunters to survive many fights with a large amount of health, and when paired with a health augmented weapon, which was done to follow the same path as when you're attacking a beast in Bloodborne and gain your health back when you attack them, meant we could play a lot more aggressive and not genuinely worry about having to use potions all the time. And that's kind of something that you should kind of stick with for the theme for creating a Bloodborne. You want to be moving fast, but at the same time, you also want to have the ability to always heal on the go. Next, I use Weakness Exploit 3 to aid us in our damage against monsters, which is always a welcome addition. Handicraft 3 to extend our weapon sharpness a bit more, but depending on the weapon you're using, you don't have to use this if your weapon of choice has incredibly high sharpness already. This then leaves you room to add in whatever you like. Evade Window 3, as the Dante set piece already had a Evade Window built into it, and also fits the playstyle of a Bloodborne Hunter very well, for their fast movements and dodges in game. So I decided to expand on that to allow us to basically dodge monsters much more easier. Lastly, we have Latent Power 1, Critical Eye 1, and Constitution 1, there are spare skills left over from the armor pieces available. They are all handy, but could be improved on even more if dual slot space was available to expand on them. But nonetheless, they are still handy. Overall, this set will give you a defense of 395, which can be augmented to be higher, and a fashion set that truly makes you a true Nightmare Frontier hunter. 
play style for this one is simple. Like I mentioned before, you're going to be focused on dodging, attacking when the right opportunity is available, and being aggressive as you can, so you can keep your health up as high as possible. The build is more of a online mess about, but help out set that's more designed for fashion end, rather than practical end. But the skills used will allow you to survive many encounters and be flexible enough to dodge any foe you strike. However, I don't recommend you use this set against timber monsters, as you will get destroyed, as the mix set only has a number of defences that will need to be upgraded, and even then it will still feel practically weak to use. So if you are going to be using this in tempered runs, be aware that you will probably die a lot, unless you're a pro monster hunter. But if you're going to use this in tempered runs, I highly, highly, highly recommend you try your best to upgrade your armor as high as possible. Get your defense up as high as possible. Even sacrifice a armor piece for some defense boost. Anything worthwhile. Because this set here, though it looks good and plays good, in tempered runs, you won't have a lot of chance. And even though I said fashion is more of the end game here, you do want to kind of at least show off to other players, at least survive most of your fights. Alright, the next build I have is one I like to call the Old Hunter set, which is a more mobile version of the New Blood set, and will allow you to efficiently dodge, weave, and aggressively attack till you only stand. This set used a lot of fabric based armor to try and fit the Bloodborne theme, which came out alright funny enough, and feels pretty smooth to use, but sadly I couldn't change much of the colouring because of how the armor is designed, but it still works. Think of this set as a unique Kane Hunt set, or my take on a Royal Kane Hunt Hunter, if they ever existed. So for the skills, I went with the following. Weakness at point 3, Handicraft 3, and Non-Elemental Boost to focus around the weapon's performance and damage while in battle. Divine Blessing 3 and Invade Window 3 to allow me to freely sweep in and out of danger like all hunters are capable of, while at the same time having a bit of extra protection so I can negate any unforeseen damage I could take. Tool Specialist 2, which reduces the amount of time I have for using certain gadgets or mantles, so I can use them much more, but this was part of the set and generally not really that worthwhile, but it's there, you can make good use of it, or you can trade it in for something else. And lastly, we have, please excuse me, Lethal Expert 1 and Constitution 1, which are two add-on skills that came with the add-on armor I use, and don't have that much use, as it's just something that was there for the armor piece, and general fashion, so don't really worry about these two skills. Overall, this would give us a defense of 397, which can be augmented to be stronger, and a somewhat stylish armor set that melds together perfectly. I'm actually quite surprised that this set actually fits well. This set with the provided skills would give you the needed damage and fast movement speed to freely dodge any monster you face, and works very well when paired with a longsword for example, as your weapon is light and allows you to move around moderately fast. You can also go ahead and use your foresight slash, which you'll probably use a lot of to dodge monsters moves at a split second, and if done correctly, you'll fill back some or all of your gauge meter in one go. And really, that's kind of it. It allows you to have more time to dodge, and thus more time to damage. But do be aware that your defense will be low, if you don't augment it, so you won't give this go in tempered runs, and I highly advise you to increase your defense first before proceeding. But if tempered runs is not your thing, then don't worry, defense you have is pretty good. Plus, you look pretty damn smart as well. Now lastly, the last set I have is a set I like to call the Battle Butler set, and the one that can provide you the power to destroy any monster you face and yet still looks stylish in the meantime. This one here, you'll probably want to go with a hammer to make good of your movement speed and raw power, but that's up to you to decide. So here are the following skills. Weakness Exploit 3, Handicraft 3, and non elemental Boost for that better weapon performance, and you can currently see there's a common trend going on here, so where some of the main meta skills will always be relevant through generally all of these. Latent Power 3 for a small affinity and stand with buff later on in fights, this is more or less of a skill that I saw could be tied into the build fine for more player usage, as monsters last longer in some fights, so it's nice to go damage control when the boost kicks in. Next, I have Evade Window 3 to stick with the fast moving movements and dodges that many hunters use to their advantage. Defense Boost 2 and Health Boost 2 to keep both our health and defense as high as possible. Now, the Defense Boost is just a add-on feature to make the set look nice, but it's not necessary if you have it the armor augmented. If you haven't, then this boost will surely help you in your survival, but not by a lot. It's mainly the health boost that will probably allow you to survive maybe one or two hits before being carted. Lastly, we have Special Armor Boost 1, which came with the Dante set and don't have any use outside of bows or bow guns, and Quick Sheath, which is also part of the armor pieces used in the set, but doesn't have that much use depending on the weapon you're using. 
Overall, this will give you 447 defense, around 80% affinity when you're late in power level 3 and weakness exploit 3 kicks in, and a very snazzy hunter whose looks could potentially kill you. This set here, another fashion set that will provide you both function and fashion in one package, and works great against the likes of any monster you face, whether in groups or solo. Out in the field, you may get people that will look at you and think damage and survival skills are more useful than your subpar fashion get up, but they don't know that you're packing heat. Not in a bad way, or a good way. Or, to be honest, I don't really know anymore. But anyway, at this point, you're packing heat that can produce a lot of damage and can generally put a lot of meta gear and builds to shame because this build here, it works well for anyone, whether high level players or new level players or people that just want a build that looks good but functions great and you should be happy with what you've got as it gives you the freedom to pick and choose whatever skills you have available while still sticking with a getter that makes you think, am I in the wrong error? If I am, then this error will do. And honestly, the only thing you're going to be doing at the end of this is on the catwalk or the gathering call or whatever. I tried to be funny there, but it's, it's, it's not working. I'll, I'll stop now. Overall, it's a nice change of pace for creating builds that I thought of that will be interesting to explore. As some of the weapons in game kind of resemble some of the hunters tools used by the hunters in the Nightmare Frontier. And also, considering that Dante's armor set was released that looks eerily similar to some of the hunters main clothing in game, it opens us up to look more fit to the cosplay and fashion purpose as well, as we all know fashion is the true end game. So there you have it, three hunters for you to go mad with. Will you accept these builds as your own, or will you do the unthinkable and create your own set to follow heat? I'll leave that up to you to decide. If you enjoy the content then do leave a like and a sub, as I would appreciate it a lot if you do. Once again thank you all for watching, and I do hope to see you all again soon.